So, do you feel like a sucker? You've been suckered in? Do you think it's amazing? Time Spa Remastered Foils? What a conversation we're going to have, because I told you it was coming. Coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. If you're new to my channel, you found me somehow in the Nintendo world of Street Fighter's backyard. Thanks a lot for checking out my content today. I do hope you enjoy it. Today is going to be a little fun. We are talking about Time Spiral Remastered. Now, I was not big on this set. I told you guys I wasn't. I didn't care about a lot of reprinted cards. I was very negative on it. And in some ways, I still am. I still think the price point is totally off. But they have done something that has caught my eye. And I did mention this about a month and a half, two months ago, where we talked about the Foil Jewel Lotus and saying it was the first real kind of, we're getting on that chase card theme, right? There's been a few kind of things they've done to kind of work toward the chase card. And it looks like now they're perfecting it. So do you feel like a sucker or do you feel amazing? I don't know, but I get to say I told people so because I knew this was coming. They've seen it be great in the other collectible card market. And I said, if they saw it there and they can see the sales, they follow the track, the figures, they know it's going to work for them and they're going to sail it. They're going to fly with it. They're going to they're gonna mow the lawn with it. They are going to make money doing chase cards wherever they can. And I actually don't have a problem with it. My problem is the price point they put it at, and that's all. My apologies, guys. we got some background noises coming in there. I will just put everything on mute. My apologies. It's you guys sending me messages. So the first thing I want to mention here is what they did was they have a, a collection of foils. These time shift, these awesome foils. They've made ultra rare within the set. Now, if you get one, if you're a poor person just buying a single pack of Time Spiral and you get lucky, you could hit like $500 card. Amazing. That's good for players who don't have a lot of money to have that chance to get something big, even if their wallet is not big. Those who have a lot of money can just go out and directly buy these cards. Good for them. I like the idea of the chase. Can you tell? But I still don't like the price point when they're charging this much for a pack of cards for a chance at something. I understand the whole lottery formula. I get it. But I don't like it for the average player. So I look here and you can see they're selling cards here on Card Kingdom for $6.99, $4.49. Some very high prices. And these are all American prices. When I looked at that, I said, oh my god, is this actually happening? Are we entering the realm of the chase? And yes, we are. So when we go here, we take a look at the next one. You're like, oh, Chalice the Void, $229. It's a $30 card. What are you talking about? 229 US. These are US prices, guys. This is Card Kingdom. Look at what they're selling stuff for. Now, when you go ahead and you see, oh, Kiki, the void, okay. Oh, wow, 229. Oh, my goodness. I'm starting to sweat here, guys. That's a lot of money. You're talking Sarah Sanctums. You're, you're talking almost a gay as cradle at this point. Mox Diamond for sure. If you get lucky enough to get one. Now, we kind of knew this was coming. We, we had this inkling back that I told you guys that my, my gut, my gut does not go wrong very often. And it told me they know what's going on out there. If they know it, you know it. And I was right. The chase is there. And I think it's epic that it's here. I'm wondering what they'll do in a standard set, in a regular set. They haven't done anything for call time really except for the Vorn clicks, right? But it's still really rare and sought after cards. So I wonder what they'll do for Strixhaven. I wonder what's happening for D&D. &D. Modern Horizons 2. What will they do? I'm getting thrilled again. I'm getting psyched up. I can't believe it. it. It's amazing to me that this could happen. So the idea of this though means, I mean, a player with a big enough wallet can just go out and purchase the individual card. But for the average player who doesn't have that money and just buys a pack or two, this could be a real game changer for those who might get lucky and get a really rare pack. Like back in the day, if you opened a Lotus, right? You had a lot of trade value there. Although sometimes people trade them for Shiv and Dragons, if I recall correctly. So you look at this and we look, you look there, you see, okay, on eBay.com, uh, this one sold for $239. Now, the Chalice is not the biggest of the sales I'm going to show you, but it is selling. It sold on the 20th. Now, that immediately follows me up to look at the prices. And when I look at these prices and I see what they're going for, you're like, there's people trying to get $750 US for a Chalice. $450 for US. $417. Now, to me, the $750 is what's called a ploy. Do not fall for the ploy. That is not the real price somebody's trying to get. There's people collaborating together. They pump a couple up really high, hoping the low ball ones are the ones that get sold. Okay? Th this car was as cheap as 300 and change, by the way. So that's what a lot of people will do is a little, little scheme. You can have multiple accounts on eBay. It's probably even the same card in a different background situation. And they put it in a different... There's lots of ways to make it look right. 
So in this case, they're just trying to pump up a price to make it look like this is a good selling price. Don't go for that heavy hitting big one up there. That is not the standardized price. Look what sells. The one that sold for 239 might have been a little fast. Anything around that 300 mark is probably what they're trying to get for the card. But that doesn't mean you have to fall for that. You can wait and see. Because when an average player finds one of these and puts up for sale or goes local LGS, they're going to sell quickly, hoping to cash in before more of these are opened. But then they've told us that this was a limited print run. Remember that. This is limited. It's a shortened print run. Really? Is it? I doubt it. They may have only done one print run, but you have no idea what's sitting in the warehouses ready to go to distributors. You don't know. I don't know either. Right? They just have, they have whole pallets sitting there waiting to go that they're going to slowly dole out to make sure that this product stays right where they want it to. Or maybe they actually printed it short thinking it wouldn't do well like Caltime. I doubt it. Caltime already had its calls in and so would Time Spot Remaster. They already would have had all the, all the printing presses going. They would have known what was needed roughly. Um, will it be printed again though? Who knows? Maybe it was just going back to the one and done situation. They did it in old sets. Maybe they know that's better flavor for players to always be churning things over, making boxes rarer as well. I don't know, but I can tell you right now the Time Spot Remaster boxes are going up in value. If you haven't seen this yet, they're going up already. So be prepared and pay attention to it. It's going high and it's going fast. My local stores around here are already charging over $300 a box, which means they've already jacked it up 20%. I expect them to go higher as they kind of reel in and realize they can make more money, which means the distributors will be charging more to the stores and it has this cycle going backwards. I'm not sure how Wizards feels about that when they aren't charging more, but it's one of the reasons why Wizards is probably putting things out to Amazon, right? They don't want to pay those distributors extra money and having them jack up the price. They probably don't like that very much. But these cards, this chase that we're in now, might be a good thing, okay? You can still buy an average pack of cards for three, four, five bucks, but if you get lucky on this, you've, you've really hit a, like a mini jackpot, which is fantastic for players who don't have the means to do this with. And for the bigger whales out there, it's the idea of getting that particular amazing card you want, that card you're just dying to get. It's, it's blowing your mind. Oh, I gotta have it. So if we look at that, you can see people are charging $999 for like things like the thought sees. 850, 630, but you see again, there's like the tempting one at the top and it goes cheaper guys, okay? But you know what the best part, the most amazing part, the end of our video is going to be? The fact these are all selling. Across the board, all the foils are selling from this set. So when you take a look here and you see Thoughtseize sold for 669, it's selling for 449, it's sold for 425, and this is all in the last couple of days. When you see that and you know it's selling, that has to tell you something. People want the chase card. They want the idea of getting something really hard and unique. But the downside of all this is when Wizards succeeds in getting these products to market, when they start tabulating up all the sales and they see what they've done, they're going to do it again, which means boxes like this will stay at this price. They will stay a little more expensive. Probably when they see what the distributors are selling for, they may even tack on 15% to try to moderate what the market can do, which means those boxes actually get more expensive for everyone. And a box that's more expensive for everyone is good for no one, guys. You've got to be paying attention to the prices. You'll choose and decide, right? You as players decide what you want to buy. I skipped this set on purpose. I still don't think it's worth the price. The chase cards that are within it, if I really had to have one, I wouldn't buy the chase card. I want a functional card I can play with. So I'll just buy one of the reprints at a cheap price. But if I happen to open a pack and got one of the chase cards, I would sell it right away to make some money. Okay, I would definitely do it because I'd love to have the cash of a thought he's worth $900 and I can cash in for like three, 400 bucks. I will, I will scream running going, ah, more money for my Mox Diamond and Cradle. That's what I would do. But everyone's going to be different when they play this out. I'll be following these sales very closely to see what's going to happen and let you guys know what I find in the next 60 to 90 days. Remember, it does take time to compile that kind of information. So it kind of falls to the backdrop as we follow more of our, our other content and topics but i've got it on the back burner i've got things going i just wait for the sales to compile so guys i really hope you enjoyed the video tonight it's something to really be aware of that this era of chase is going to be here it looks like it's here to stay and i find it fascinating i'm not against it i just want to see what they're going to do with it okay so thanks a lot for tuning in today please leave comments questions concerns below let me know what you guys think how do you feel about this chase car with all these fancy foils and cool stuff 
Are they Pringling? Let me know that too. I'd love to know if they're Pringling. All right, guys, looking forward to talking to you every day of the week. This is MTG Moxman. Have yourselves a great one, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. That's crazy pricing. Crazy. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. Big shout out to all my patrons out there. You guys make the world go round. As you can see, it spins and it spins with nachos and cheese, some boomstick additions, shop smart, shop S smart. And of course, Bruce Campbell's an awesome actor. Who, who 